Hey, what's going on, YouTube family? What's up, uh, Flow Nation? Just want to make a quick video, talk about a couple things, and show you something really cool. Obviously, you can already tell from the title. So, I got the Hobao VTE2 right here. Um, came out really good, I think. I love the Delta Plastic Body. First thing first, shout out to my sponsor, my team, my friends, um, New Motors, TP Motors. Uh, right there, TP Motors. Here, let me see if I can get on it. TP Motors, New Motors, Saga Custom RC, Delta Plastic, right there in big riding. Uh, SMC, thank you very much. Roaring Top Lipos, thank you very much. Um, to everybody that supported the Flow Nation and uh, supported uh, what we do, guys. Um, so, big shout out to them. Big shout out to my whole team. Um, Jaboria Racing. Lightning Dad, uh, Joe Strickland, Graham, uh, Rock, I already said V. There's so many guys that uh, I want to give a shout out to. Um, RC Cooling Solutions, uh, G-Force fans, all of them great dudes, man. I'm glad I, uh, I got a chance to meet them all. But let's get into the video. So I got the Hobao VTE. I believe this is the first one. I'm going to hop right in. Flip this off my stand so I can show you guys um, part one of this video, part two, right after I show you guys this. Uh, I just did the fiberglassing so it's a little wet still, but, and it's not totally done yet. XLX2, XLX2, 50 horsepower, two Steve New Motors, all hooked up. I'm going to move these because they're only sitting there for now. Still got soldering to do, so when I do soldering on them, I, uh, I take this case off right here so that way when I solder the bullets and all that on but as you can see the motor and I think this thing will push 50 plus more mile per or horsepower sorry um, there's guys that are running the news now that are pushing almost 30 horsepower with them so I don't know if we'll get close to that but I know for a fact I've pulled 25 horsepower with these motors um, so yeah, I got the Steve New Motors in there, dual Steve News, dual XLX2s, and it's easy to do, guys, very easy to do. As you can see, I didn't drill any holes. All the holes are already there for the Hobao VTE. You just got to order an extra motor mount from Saga Custom RC, um, and that's basically it. Now, as you can see in there, I do have my brand new Hobao long spool. Um, I'm sure it'll get copied once again. I'm first with it. But uh, yeah, I got the Hobao long spool after a long weekend of running this car and finding out some uh, things that need to be fixed on this car. And I'll go over that in the next couple videos. Um, there's some major parts of this car that, that really um, didn't perform well. I think once we tune those up and get them right, I think they'll be good. One is already done. Javoria, as you can see, already done, brother. Um, but my, my dude, Gio Javoria Racing, told me, you know, don't, don't be afraid to throw your spool in there. I think it'll work and whatnot. So I did, and I changed some things up. Um, but yeah, with the spool in there, super, super nice. The spool are on Flow Pack RC right after this video. Um, check it out if you want one. So you can get it with the Saga gear, without. You can get it with the dog bones or without. So, um yeah i think it worked out real good guys now one of the things I'll, I'll talk about that in the in the next one but yeah 50 horsepower dual new motors dual xlx2s um still not sure how i want to put them with the body i can put them both up on the brace if i wanted to like that or i could uh, uh put one there and one up here i'm thinking about just doing like this but of course turning that like that and turning this one like that so that way the motor wires um but yeah check out saga custom rc you can get the uh, extra motor mount there and it bolts right up guys uh so it makes it easy for a dual motor for this thing i believe it's the first one i haven't seen any anywhere else so it's the first dual motor vte2 and uh pretty much the first dual motor build i was going to do the felony and uh decided not to and these motors guys these aren't permanent so I'm gonna run it like this to start, but I just ordered 1539s today, the Steve News, which will get me right to right there. I might have to trim a little bit, but I believe they'll fit right where they're at. 
So I have dual 1539s in there, um, which are longer, more torque, more power, and we'll see if it holds up. But um, yeah, man, I, I do dig the way this car runs. There, there's some issues, and like I said, I'll go over that with you guys in the next video. How about that? Um, but yeah, I think this car is going to be a killer. Dual motor, VTE2. Now I have, uh, jumping on to the next thing, real quick, let me throw the body on this and get this out of the way. So this is the Delta Pot plastic Porsche body, and I'm in love. This body is killer. I love it. Love the way it works. Love the way it fits on there. Um, like I said, I did just fiberglass this body, and normally it would be hard as a rock, but I think I didn't put enough hardener in there, so it's going to take a couple more days. As you can see, it's not one to go down with that other one right there, so I'll have to move that up. Um, actually, no, there it is. So, body's not completely hard yet. Hopefully, it uh, starts hardening up real soon. I just did it yesterday, so we'll see. Thank you, Ben, from Delta Plastics. Big shout out to him. Um, but one of the questions I've been asked a lot lately, guys, let me put this up on the shelf real quick. How do I make my parallel plugs? So I'm going to show you guys real quick how I make my parallel plugs. Hold on. All right. So we're back. Got my glass. Guys, if you are uh, tuning your bodies, don't trust just a piece of wood or a countertop glass or uh something like that that's not going to give you an off reading this is perfectly flat every single time so like i said a nice piece of glass this came from like an old table or something like that um but first thing you want to do you want to come into here and you want to get you a couple of bullets so you got your bullet connectors oops and this is basically how i do mine so you're going to take your bullets, right? Just regular old bullets. And you're going to go out and you're going to cut them in half. Right here on the top. You're going to cut them in half. And then you're going to break one side off. So instead of looking like that, you're going to do it like that. You're going to cut one side completely off. Cut it in half and then break. And once you cut it in half, if you take some needle nose, it'll snap right off. Now I sanded it to kind of smooth it out, but that's what you end up with two half pieces okay see those halves so you're going to take those two half pieces and you're going to get some wire look you can use eight gauge you can use 10 gauge i prefer six gauge why because you're going to be sharing the load with two different batteries so eight gauge will work guys don't go below eight gauge wire i use six gauge because like i said i'm going to be sharing the load between two batteries i don't use this six gauge for like the motors i don't use it for anything else just because i don't feel like you need it you know you you look at your uh your dryer for instance in your house washer or i mean your dryer yes 220 volt right or 210 120 and 210 are basically the same wire. If you cut them off, most of it is sleeving. Not much of it is actually copper wire. It's a lot of sleeving and a lot of uh, stuff so you don't cut it and shock yourself. I don't believe that bigger wire is really going to help that much. So what I did, I cut four inches off exact. Four inches. And I'll show you. Now that I got four inches, I'm going to take a blade... And I'm going to cut, if I can find my blade, one second, found it. All right, so you're just going to take a little blade like this, and you're going to cut the ends. Um, I'd say about 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and you're just going to roll it. Roll it all the way around, okay? And you're going to do that to both sides. You can eyeball it because you can always cover it with heat shrink, but you're just going to roll it. You're going to pull it off. They're basically the same on each side. Maybe a little more on this side, but it's okay. Now you're going to go directly in the center and you're going to make another cut. That's just, you don't have to go all the way around. That's just showing you that's your center mark. So now you want to go eight millimeter, or I'm sorry, five millimeter 
on the side from that cut. All right, and you're gonna go five millimeter from this side. You're gonna take it and you're just gonna cut that sleeve off. So now you have it open like this. Now, this is why I cut it in half. You're gonna tin this, solder it, and you're gonna shove that right up in there, just like so, and solder that down, just like this. All right, guys, so I just tin this, it's very hot. When it comes to solder, less is more. You don't want a lot of solder, okay? So this is half the bullet here. I'm gonna clean my soldering iron off. I'm gonna tin this just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice soaking. Make sure it sticks real good. And there you go, a little bit on the back. There you go. Now, this piece of wood, old timer taught me this a long time ago. It's probably the best jig I've had. I've bought the aluminum ones. I've bought all sorts of jigs. Drill some holes in it for your bullets. Um, it's gonna get hot, but it's not gonna hurt nothing. So that's what I use as a jig. I still have the clamping style. I have the aluminum style. I have all of them. This is what I like the best. It works. So, all right. I'm going to take my piece here that I already tinned the inside on. And I'm going to put that right there. Let me uh, clean my soldering iron and then tin it again. All right. I'm going to start by getting this hot. So when you're soldering, I see a lot of people uh, using a torch, right? And what they do is they sit here and get the cup hot and then dip the wire into it. You don't want to do that, first off. Um, ferocity, which is air inside the solder joint, is not good. You don't want to do that. You want to get as much air out and you just want copper to copper. That's it. So after I do that, I think I put a little too much solder in there. I'm going to hold that on there. Let it sit for a minute. I know I put too much solder in there. And maybe you guys have a better way of doing this, but this is my way of doing it. So, like I said, I got a little too much solder on there on the cup. So, I'm just going to burn that off real quick on the outside. Boom, it's done. So, that's how it is. Now, after I clean this up, you'll see what it looks like. All right, so I just went out and I cleaned this up, filed this part down. Let me see if I can focus in a little better. Hey, well, let me move that light out of the way. Hard. I don't know why. There it goes. So I just filed it down on that one side where the tab was sticking up. Made it real clean. The only reason I leave this back tab on there instead of just cutting it off flat is because uh, it gives you a nice background to put the wire on so when you go to put the wire on it don't just slip off gives you a nice background then you sand it down and uh that's what i do like i said i used a little too much solder that's why it ran down but nothing in the cup now you're just going to take your bullets and i can't tell you which ones to use because everybody uses different like for instance this is my negative so obviously i would use one of these on each side with it for mine um, but now you just take the ends that you already cut and put your bullet on both sides. This one would go to the ESC. These ones go to the battery. They're sharing the load of a six gauge wire. So there you go. You can, uh, take some tape or heat shrink and that's how mine are. Just like that. I just heat shrink them up. Um, obviously this one, I cut too far back. That's why for you guys, I just did that. So that, that way now when you go inside, your bullet, it'll sink all the way down, but there won't be a big old gap like this in mine. But, you know, they're not meant to be pretty. That's just the way I've done it. Everybody asks me how I do it, and that's how I do it. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish up another set now that you, are, you already made me do this. And uh, you can, everybody can come up with their own way. That's just the way I do it. Um, I've also been asked just recently, how do I solder... Um, to the castle mamba x8 or mamba xlx2 so here it is once you take the case off that's what it looks like right i try to get down in there every single time right there is where i come off so if you're going to take your cap pack and you're going to solder it 
directly on there. Now, sometimes, if I want a little bit of resistance, here's one where it came apart, but I go up a little bit. Depends. You just want it as close as you can to the ESC, guys. It don't have to be right on that gold part that I showed you, but you do want it as close as possible. So, there you go. Um, that's how I make my parallel plugs. Hope everybody uh, enjoys that I just wrecked six, a bunch of six gauge wire and bullets and everything for you guys to watch this. No, I'm just joking with you guys. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Stay tuned for the uh, VTE2 50 horsepower, possibly 60. Like I said, guys have done it with those same motors. I know for a fact once the uh, new 1539s come in, should have them later this week, that will be a 60 horsepower two motor car, not four, two motors, 60 horsepower, guys. Um, stay tuned. And uh, we'll uh, try to get this thing straight for you guys. Stay tuned and we'll get that going and I'll show you all the little tricks I did to the VTE2. Finally got it to where it's shooting straight, where I like it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm out, guys. Peace.